What's the matter? The Hatter's the matter. The Hatter is my truest friend. If he's in need, I will help him. It will be a race against time. He is not someone you want as your enemy. Time is a he. Underland. Your time is up. Alice can't stay away from that Wonderland. She. She's addicted. She's addicted. Her, 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 I, I think her crack dealer's up in there. <laughs> she, like, it's a caterpillar. That <laughs> caterpillar <laughs> smoking on a hookah. I know. That's why she always sees him before she goes. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Welcome back, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> stay away from your over there. I'm sure, stay there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we can arrange something. <laughs> like a butterfly. Like <laughs> but the thing with uh, Alice, Alice is, uh, she's way ahead of her time. You know, she's doing things that women shouldn't be doing. Not that I'm saying myself that women shouldn't be doing that, but just because of the time back in the day, they said women can't do that. But no, not Alice. Alice was always doing things her own way. And it's always getting her into trouble. And now she's about to get her mama's house taken away. She don't want to know her place, take a nice job with a pension. She got to have, what, what, what you say there, Martin? Aspirations. <laughs> That's right. She wants to be a sea captain. Yeah. But. You know, when things start going wrong, Alice just kind of zone out and go crazy. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> going to all of the world. That's her wonderland. And it's there that she finds a lot of characters who have helped her out in her predicaments. Mainly that of the Mad Hatter with Johnny Depp returning. That's right. And this time, she can't depend on the Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter says, no, this time I need you. To help me out. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> I don't know. Who is that? <laughs> oh, go get the cookies, man. They're here. Uh, but she, he says, yeah, you know, I'm not as mad as I was. I'm not as, ha I'm not, I'm not as happy as I was. This time I... I'm I, on some hard times. I'm on some hard times, Alice. I need you. I need you to be my bottom bitch this time. You know, I, <laughs> I, my, I think my family might be alive, but nobody believes me. And it's up to you to convince people. Alice says, no, nah, you, you crazy than exactly. I am. He's like, oh, <laughs> you're killing me, girl. You're killing me. <laughs> so she goes out to find out what is going on with the Mad Hatter's family. Is, is that family still alive? To do that, she's going to have to go back in time, stealing a special device from Time himself. And Time don't play that. Mm. Can Alice pull all this off while at the same time not fucking up Wonderland? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, with this film, speaking of Time and Wonderland and all this stuff that's going on in her little fantasies, I have to say that this movie looks amazing. I'm watching this, and the first... The first 15 minutes that they go into Wonderland, it is incredible. It is weird. It's intricate. It's highly detailed. It's like watching an, M an M.C. Escher painting come to life. I'm amazed at how much detail that they've put into this. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's not just with that. Like when Alice actually has to go and confront time. Time is a living, breathing world. Time has, like minutes are alive. Minutes combined to, to make hours. You know, the hours break down into seconds. Everything mm -hmm. is alive with time. And I thought all that, I thought all that was clever. I loved it. Love watching this. And the more I watched all the CG in it, the more I looked at this world and everything, I said, and now it's rare that you ever going to hear me say this, but I'm like, damn, you know, everything that is CG is cool. It's the humans I don't like. Anytime somebody's just a plain old human or they got makeup on and that's it, I'm bored. Don't, don't, I don't, I mean, I'm, don't even want to deal with it. I mean, and I'm talking about the CG characters here. The CG characters have way, way more personality to me. I mean, now, maybe not the best characterizations. You know, they're not the deepest characters that you find out there. But to me, they were far more interesting than anybody. You know, no kidding. Yeah, Alice was born to me. Anne Hathaway acting like a spaced out hippie chick every time she talking and everything, which I didn't like in the first movie. Mm. Acting like she had Woodstock and shit. You know, I, right. I, I didn't like that. But anytime I was looking at these CG characters, I was blown away. Go back into the past and save the Hatter's family. If the Hatter's delusion is made true, then he would be made well again. Go back in time? Mm. <clears throat> How? The chronosphere. I'm sorry, the chrono what? The chronosphere. The source that powers the grand clock of all time. Legend has it also lets one travel across the ocean of time. None of us can use it because we've already been in the past. And if your past self sees your future self, what happens? They 
There was no history of it happening, but it is said that if it were to happen, everything would be history. That sounds very dangerous. It is extremely so. Because you're not from here. Only you can use it, Alice. And then kill your family. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a saying. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> Destroy them all, Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> they must learn. <laughs> you know, if 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 it was CG, I was in love with it, man. And I'm not just talking about complete CG characters. I'm talking about like if you had CG on you, you were fine. Like if you were, you know, if you if you were like an actor and you were enhanced with CG, like like I'm I'm still amazed. By what they did with the the Tweedledee and the and the Tweedledum characters. What's the matter? The Hatter's the matter, or the matter of the Hatter, the former. No, the latter. Oh. <laughs> Tweedles. I... He's mad. Okay. I was looking at this and I was saying, who do they look like? Look at them. I mean, and. They, when I was okay, maybe it's just me, but when I was watching them, I said, "Man, you put a you put a wig on them, and some lipstick." To me, they look just like Rebel Wilson, man. Oh, well, <laughs> oh, well, well that's that, a twin brother from the movie. Yeah. Oh, I never knew that. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think they're related in real life, but like when they were in, uh, was it Bridesmaids? Bridesmaids. Right, say they play was, twins. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. That's it. Looks like that actor who looks like her. Mm. Okay. I was wondering why. Why am I so attracted to Tweedledee and Tweedledum? Mm. <laughs> I, I, I think that still doesn't answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you know me. <laughs> Going back to my days when I was just a lad, I didn't. I wasn't too picky. Yeah, faces instead of nipples, right there. <laughs> but you know, uh, I it, and there are there are characters that I really liked that were a lot of fun. Again, CG enhanced characters like man, I haven't liked Sasha Baron Cohen in a while. I think he's obnoxious. I think you know his movies aren't as good. I think he's just gone. He's just he's just going for shock value these days. And you know I I, uh, I forget sometimes how great of an actor he can be. Mm-hmm. I mean, out of all the characters that are in here, see that's the thing about it. You're in Wonderland. When you get to some of the characters that are the, the freaky characters, I like those people, man. Uh, and and Sasha Baron Cohen plays uh, time, time itself. And in this particular scene too, uh, you get the insanity. That is supposed to capture the, the 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 tone of Lewis Carroll. In this particular scene, you get the insanity that we often enjoy these stories for. Is it true that you heal all wounds? <laughs> Time is on my side. Why is that you wait for no man? <laughs> I just can't find the time. <laughs> Tasha, where have you been? You're late. Actually, I'm right. On time. <laughs> He's like, man, I'm getting sick of these goddamn puns. I know. What time on my head? <laughs> you silly nit. Let's really think that I've not heard these cheap barbs before. Your attempts at mockery fall flat. Look, look. Enough. Enough. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you, you scared the hell out of your house. Oh, <laughs> now you know what it's like being around you all the time. <laughs> oh, goddamn punch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I really like that character, even though he was doing like a, like a cross between uh, Christoph Waltz and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, but thought it was fun to watch. I'm surprised and, they gave you that scene because that was possibly the best one in the movie. You know what? And the funny thing is, I fell asleep in the movie for a little bit, and I fell asleep on this part. I did too. Right I was here. like, you just wow. showing it now. I was like, I don't even remember that part. Yeah, I, I know. I was just kind of like, damn, okay, because I remember asking, uh, I asked my girl, I said, mm-hmm. what was that part everybody was laughing at? She's like, I don't sleep too. Like, <laughs> that was the part that everybody was laughing at. I was like, all right, we finally, you know, got a good scene that's going going well, and and they nailed it right here, like you said, knowing uh, the Lewis Carroll part. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame that uh. uh Sasha Baron Cohen isn't playing Freddie Mercury too, man. Because I was looking at that, I was like, damn, he would have made a great Freddie Mercury. Did you hear why that fell apart? Yeah, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah. Martin, Ray, let's go. Might be story time. No, no, no. I, I, I talked about it on the show. Yeah, but you know, I, uh, you know, I yeah, that that part right there captured very much what uh, what Lewis Carroll was with his stories. And I know that these movies are not supposed to be. Look, I'm not sitting up here. I'm not like some of these critics who are talking about. Well, this is not the Lewis Carroll that I know. Right. You didn't know Lewis Carroll. You know, I mean, you know, some of these people probably haven't read the read the books. You know, they just want to be purist about something. Did you read the books? Uh, actually, I did. I read I read both of them when I was a kid. 
So how accurate is this to Alice through the Looking Glass? <laughs> no, 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 no. I know it's supposed to be a test. But you expect me to be like, oh, well, you know what happened. See, the singing man. <laughs> it went back in time and everything, man. Sasha Baron Cohen's in the book. Nah, man. It, you know, looking at this, I'm not, I'm not a purist. I don't give a shit. Change it around. Make it different. It's a different time. You know, people, and to be honest with you, the, uh, it's a, if you try to adapt Lewis Carroll to, um, to the, uh, you know, strictly, Buy the book to make it a movie, it wouldn't work that well. Disney tried to do it years ago, and it's considered to be a classic because of the artistry. But if anybody goes and watches that, I dare you to like, say that's a coherent story. It's not. Sure. So I admire them for trying to do that here. But the thing is, with this, is that they, it starts out great. I would even say that near the end, it, has a, it, it speeds up its pace. But the middle of this is dull. The middle of this is so boring, and the reason why is because they want to concentrate on everybody but Alice. And I'm going to tell you why that's important in a little bit. Because what they want to do is they want to go in and give everything a backstory. You know, everybody got to have an, an explanation. Everybody have a reason for why they are or who they are. One of the main characters is, uh, is the Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter, you know, going to the movie mostly being the sad hatter. You know, we fit. <laughs> I mean, I know it's not. Yeah, even how, how long did you work on that today? <laughs> That's all, uh, all, all, all day. I've been working all week. <laughs> That's like one scene where he's not acting. Got it. Just one. Nah, man. Oh, uh, you know, looking at this, it's uh, the stuff with the Mad Hatter going back to find out what is happening. With, uh, with his family, trying to figure out why he's sad. I'm not saying that a character doesn't need to have more depth to them. I'm not saying a character can't be built up. I'm not saying that you can't you know, give more characterization or a story to uh, a character uh, that's different from what we see in the book. But with this, it's, uh, it doesn't feel genuine. It just feels like they gave it a backstory because they needed something for that character to do. Why? Because it's Johnny Depp. The character tested well. Everybody responded to that. It doesn't feel like it actually like that character needs that particular backstory. And by the way, I don't know how y'all felt. Fuck his family. I didn't give a shit one bit. I'm like, let's have you know, speed the movie up. Let's have some fun. I don't give give a damn about who his family is or whether his family died or not. I mean, you know, if it felt like it really needed to be there and it felt natural, I'd be down with it. But I don't want to hear that shit. I don't give a damn about his family. Fuck, just make me laugh. <laughs> damn man, you are cold. <laughs> yeah, and now you know what? I know what you're doing. You're trying to pull this thing where it's like, yeah, man, you know, you this and that. But I agree with you. I know you with me on this, Martin. All right, man. I, I, I do agree with you <laughs> on the fact that it's not um, accurate to Alice Little Looking Glass. Outside of that, I thought this movie was just some puerile dog shit. I, I, don't, I don't know how you could use the words great or love on, on this. Or decent. Or de yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. You got dogs looking at you like, damn, man. <laughs> I see dog shit and this ain't it, man. I'll Honestly, it like, I am no fan of the first movie, but I did not think that they could pull off making one that was worse than that. Really? Yes. Yes. I mean, honestly, from, from the moment it begins with Alice on the ship, it's like, all right, you're trying to crowbar your f f feminist message in here. But, OK, that's fine. We live in a new age. This is the kind of thing we're doing. But every conflict that's set up, I'm like, there's an easy resolution to that. There's a simple way to fix this. But, hey, we got to get this thing going. So have an excuse for her to go back to Wonderland. And when we get there, what we discover is they have no ideas. They had they they had, I, clearly Lewis Carroll didn't write anything else they could pull no. from because this is just this is sequelitis to the max where it's like <laughs> we want to we got we got the license where the artists have already created things let's just get a movie going because the story it's not compelling in the least yeah the Mad Hatter is sad boo hoo I mean you were a side character to begin with but now <laughs> the whole story is about you oh sorry yeah. it's not about you it's about this family of yours that's been off camera for, for two movies now. It, yeah. it, like, who gives a shit? Uh, Sasha Baron Cohen, yeah, he was probably the only thing I liked in it. But he's not doing Arnold Schwarzenegger mixed with something else. It's a character that, it's a, it's a, this is like the character he played in Hugo and in Les Mis. It's, it's the same thing with those, the same accent he's done for both. Just here, he's more toned down. He's, he's actually like the, the calmest thing in here. <clears throat> no, he is. He those really CG is. characters were annoying as fuck because they had no personality to them. Man, I like them, man. They, they just jumped in every so often and made some kind of lame comment. It's, and it, it really, it's like somebody wrote the whole thing and it was done and somebody said like, well, I think we should get some humor in here. 
Really? Yeah, man. I mean, I know we got to shoot in 10 minutes, but just have your nephew write a couple of jokes for them to I say. I'm, so, coming too. I'm, I'm sorry I got you upset, man. I'm sorry we're doing this review right man, now. Man, I, I was I was just sitting there like, wow, is this not going to get better at all? Because the movie, before it was ended, I saw his ass rush out. Oh, he, yeah, he ran. He, 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 <laughs> I was, I, he <laughs> seriously <laughs> knocked the old woman in the head to get out of the theater, man. I saw his silhouette. I heard that one. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's... And Martin, look, I... And, I, and, and, and I mean... It, you talk about a predictable ending. I'm I'm sorry, predictable six endings it had to it. Uh, yeah, g- getting to that climax, that whole big thing. I, I don't even want to say what it was, but I was like, yeah, here we go. We gotta have the big set piece. Um, this is the kind of thing that Tim Burton would have done, except somehow in the middle. Even though I wouldn't have liked it, he would have found some way to entertain me. Not this. I, this is some pro, protege of his you, who directed it. I, so it's yeah. like we're getting we're getting the C level Tim Burton. <laughs> damn, that's that's how, that's how little they respect us. Oh, Martin, you're making me feel like a piece of shit right now because I didn't feel like this. I didn't feel anywhere nearly how you feel, man. Because I I tell you when I when nah, uh, no, you just slept through it. <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 I t- hey man, I, I, I took I, a small nap. No, 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 no so, judgment, no judgment. No, I dozed off too. No, you know because I see what you're saying. Because look, I. Now you're making me feel like I'm defending this shit because I I was I was I was really upset with a lot of the shit that they did here, uh, but I'm mostly upset about like I found the characters cool I found the visuals great I mean I could watch this movie and be satisfied it was it was mostly a story thing with me because backstory was not needed here like one of the biggest things with the backstory like even more than a Mad Hatter what made me mad was uh. Hella, uh, Helena Bottom Carter. Yeah, as, yeah uh, the, the Queen of Hearts. The, the Queen of Hearts. And the reason why that made me mad is because what's her backstory? Her backstory is why is her head so big? And it's like, we don't need to hear that shit. No. And, and the thing is, the story behind it, like the, the origin story that we get for why her head is so big, oh, she tripped and her head swole. It makes they, no sense. And they never got the fluid out. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> the dumbest backstory I've ever seen. I think any movie I've, I've gone out seen ever. Um, I mean, one of the things about this movie is they really mess up on is it's called Alice in Wonderland. And like, even if you go back to the original movie, the animated movie, or the the, the newer one uh, that came out with Tim Burton uh, a couple years ago, there was a, still a sense of wonder. Now yeah. it feels like she's just going through the motions because she's she's familiar with all the characters. Nothing's new to her. So you're like, all right, I'm just watching some girl try to try to save the world or save this land because of a, of a very sad friend and willing to put the world in danger because of your sad friend. That's the thing about Alice, man. Alice, Alice, kind of a selfish bitch, man. She's beyond I mean, selfish. Like, I mean, they're telling her if you take this, you will destroy the world but my friend hurt his exactly. feelings are hurt yeah. like, he's like listen the reality <coughs> would be torn asunder your friends will just go into atoms and die but my friend said yeah you know <laughs> your friend gonna be dead if you destroy this world yeah. but you know we're talking about we're talking about wonderland like it's a real place and that's the most important thing Wonderland is not a real place. Wonderland is all in her head. Wonderland is her imagination when, when she loses her shit and she can't cope with life mm-hmm. so therefore when you know, Wonderland should reflect the, the 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 her reality. It should reflect the problems that she's having in real life. Exactly. And it does not do that at all. You know, in her life, people are on her ass because she's she's a woman and she can't do anything. When she goes to Wonderland, all that is forgotten. And there's so many people that have done this right before. Do you remember American McGee and the game uh, Alice? Alice uh, into madness. You know. Oh yeah. And with that oh, game, yeah, it was all. It. It was all about Alice. Alice pretty much had, she she lost it. She's gone crazy. Mm-hmm. And so when you go to Wonderland, Wonderland is dark. Wonderland is being torn apart because Alice herself, her mind's not right. Jesus. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> and if this Martin's like, shit, I ain't going there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, had if you look, I'm not against them trying to make some feminist statement here, as long as it's not too heavy, but why you know, if you're gonna do that. Commit to it. Have her go. Commit. To, Thank have you. Have her go to Wonderland and have maybe she has to. I'm just pulling this out of my ass right now. She has to team up with an enemy. The queen, the <laughs> Why queen, not? They did. They did. <laughs> <laughs> like how's the queen still in power? Didn't she get exiled in the last? It'd be kind of funny if she, you know maybe a, a king is up and uh, Wonderland is oppressed and she's got to get with the Queen of Hearts. You know, two women pull together and do, do some shit to save Wonderland. But uh-huh. no, it all has to be about oh, what characters did the people like in the last? What the kids like? Are oh, we gonna still do this Mad Hatter shit? You know, making me fucking mad right now. This is this this is they, they dropped a lot. Mm-hmm. They they dropped a lot of opportunity for this movie right here to be a better film. Right. I feel like one of the the bigger things is, especially in the again in the animated one and the the, the more recent ones, when she went to Wonderland. Yeah, as adults we know, all right, this is her just trying to cope. But if you were a kid, you'd be like, all right, she fell into this rabbit hole, or you know, she did this. But this is the movie I finally realized Alice is just a junkie. 
because <laughs> she she goes through some life struggles. She can't handle that shit. She goes and gets high. Like there was even a, a line in here. They're like, "Yeah, we found you shaking on the ground, trying to crawl under the couch, screaming about the atmosphere." Uh-huh. I'm like, "This bitch is crazy." That's what, you know, that's what I'm saying. That's, you know, it, in the they it, does no one besides us recognize the fact that Alice is mentally ill. Like Alice is gonna be those homeless people on the corner talking to themselves mm-hmm. because they they say that hey. You know, her mother tells her, she's like, where have she, I mean, she blacks out mm-hmm. for days. They, she's mm-hmm. like, what the fuck am I? She's like, you were under the couch muttering to yourself, mm-hmm. talking crazy. We have to put you, we have to institutionalize your ass. My friend's a caterpillar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you seen the dude in the hat? <laughs> and nobody, nobody, and it's not addressed. Mm-hmm. Not even at the end of the movie. She comes back out like everything is normal. And her mother never says, my fuck, take her, man. Get her now. Yeah. Get her coat. Nobody's waiting with a big butterfly net. It's, a, <laughs> it's fucking insane how, the, you know, this is. It baffles me how they just miss a lot of details in this movie just so they can just put out there what they know is going to make money. Well, plus it's it's all about how much C- CG can they dump on the screen because even her adventure in Wonderland, it's it's like it's it's random and it's just like whatever they need to have this happen, it does. Like there's no set rule on okay, you got to do this to get it here. It's yeah. just like just run around yeah. and throw that thing, and now this is going on, and you move to the next thing, and you chaos. move to the next thing. Yeah, it's chaos. And, and you know, the, 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 but not a good chaos. Not that kind of chaos where you're like, man, what's going to happen next? She's kind of like, all right, go ahead, and, do what you want to do. Yeah, and you know, and I didn't. I, the, the reason why I kind of liked it at first is because they're playing with the themes that I originally thought were going to. Uh, Give a nod to not on, not only to Lewis Carroll but also to the Walt Disney film. Sure, uh, because you know time travel seems like a real derivative thing to try to pull away. Because hey, everybody time traveling now, <laughs> right? I've seen, I've seen about three time travel movies in shows in the past two months. Mm-hmm. But they acknowledge that in the uh, in the Disney classic. I mean, the White Rabbit is all about time. I'm late. I'm late. For the very important date. No time to say hello, goodbye. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. You know who that voice is? Um. It's Mr. Smee from Peter Pan. It's Bill, I think his name is Bill Thompson. You know who else? Uh, he whose other voice he did? Who else? Oh. Uh, was he? Did he do Carve and no, the Jungle he, Book? No, he did. You know. Oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, <wow>. <laughs> <laughs> that makes so, sense. Did he take meth for one and heroin? <laughs> so, <laughs> about to say, so when he's coked up, he's like this. <laughs> and then when he comes down, that's him right there. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> yeah, I can't make it to work today. <laughs> Day quill, night quill. <laughs> I think I kind of dig where you're coming from and saying you enjoyed it when it first started off because it was very reminiscent of the the original because it was a lot of colors, there was a whole bunch of stuff going on. It was sure. like fun chaos, but then it turns into the next hour and you know twenty minutes is just all dark and like there's no there's no joy to the movie really. Um, my, my favorite scenes are where they are not focusing on the characters. I can look seriously. I'll give the movie credit. I can just watch this and I hardly say that about any movie with a lot of special effects. My Hat is off to the special effects team here. I mean, this is this is the character. I know you said it's too much, Martin, but I I enjoyed all the creativity that went behind that. Like I said, you know, I enjoyed that uh, when they were working with time, seconds with characters, seconds were formed to make minutes, and minutes were formed to make. And, you know, there's a lot of imagination that went behind that world building right there. But uh, as far as characterization goes, eh, that's bullshit. But you know, I I don't hate it as much as you do because I hate. That first Alice in Wonderland movie. I hate that film. And it, I was kind of okay with the movie. But then they did. I mean, I, that's rare that you would give me one scene in a movie that would make me hate it. I mean, because the one thing I say about this, Alice, she ain't never crip walking in this, you know. She ain't ever dancing. She ain't never doing this. Uh, you know, they, they don't ever make the Mad Hatter start break dancing. I hate this. Why does it look weird? Because it is weird. <laughs> it's you know, a bootleg version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Martin, I, I, so, I show so much bullshit up here. You ain't never asked about the quality. <laughs> Martin even like this movie. I ain't like, man, I can't see him dancing. What's wrong? <laughs> this is 1080p. <laughs> I didn't get this at Best Buy, Marty. I jacked this off the internet. Okay, all right, sorry. (laughs) I can't see his moves. (laughs) His smooth moves. You know, I ain't doing none of that in there, so that's why I don't. What what, what about the big dance number at the end? I think I was out by that. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, they brought in Pink for a big dance number at the end. Fuck that. No, I was gone. I was gone before that. Yeah, I was too, but I got told about it. 
Well, come on, man. They might have been lying to you. You don't know. But, what would be the point of that? Oh, man, <laughs> three three different people decide to get together and form this lie. You, <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, Mark. They might have been messing with you. You know, be fair. Let your eyes. Uh, you, Mark. So those two scenes of what just ruined, like, made you hate that movie. I hated it. If I, those weren't in there, how would you feel about that movie? I would probably say it's a rental. If it were not in the movie for the first Alice in Wonderland, uh-huh. I'd probably say that. And being that I didn't have that, look, I didn't see that dance number at the end, so it's there. So Whether you saw it or not, it's still there. I didn't see it. <laughs> so that bear does not shit in the woods, Martin. I don't know. But I you know what I ain't gonna say nothing. I ain't gonna say nothing. I'm gonna let you talk first, man. Go ahead. Some more bullshit. There we go. All right. Straight up. <laughs> Um, there was some, there was a couple of backstory things there that I did like. I really enjoyed how you found out why tea time is, is happening. I was like, all right, that's a cool thing. It was a nod back to Lewis Carroll and a nod back to the first one. But outside of that, this movie was fucking awful. I'm sorry. I couldn't stand this shit. And this was somebody that stayed coherent and conscious the whole time. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> there was moments I was like, all right, I get it. And the whole time I'm watching it, I'm like, all right, so is this made for kids? Is this made for adults? Because a lot of the stuff that's like happening is too scary for kids. There was a kid next to me just shaking his ass off and holding on to his dad for dear life. Oh, I saw. You know what? I saw that kid get taken out too. Yeah, exactly. Oh, for real? <laughs> yeah, that was a kid that I, I yelled, "Bitch!" <laughs> <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> and like, Sir, you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, this had one of those things where you could tell a movie is bombing that that people are starting to just give pity laughs and pity claps to it. It, it was basically the same thing what happened with Batman v Superman people were like it's supposed to be good so clap or ha ha at this moment but that's what it was it was all struggle and when you gotta force yourself to laugh or enjoy a movie it's some old bullshit yeah it felt like there were no real stakes in this okay well and yes sir musical number at the end <laughs> I did not it does not exist Mark I didn't see it <laughs> You know me. You know how petty I am. You know, the thing with this is that it is under a different director here. It's under a director named James Bobbin, who's going to be doing uh, the MIB movie, the M- the... The, the, the MIB 23. 23 with the with the uh, Jump Street 21 Jump Street. Oh well. So hey, Martin, there goes your franchise. <laughs> oh, CGI. Hey, hey. Yeah, Martin, you knew that right hey, at the end sooner hey, or later. Hey, I was happy with the with the first two really good movies. And uh, you know, I and because of that, I think. I don't know. I'm not going to say it was Tim Burton that, that this is the reason why I didn't like the movie. You know, there's a script involved. There's a studio involved. There's powers that, that are at play that make this movie what it is. And that's in this particular movie, I'll give it to you guys. You're right. This is a film where it's just a, it's, it's, it's an obligatory sequel. You know, we, we, we got to make this. Whatever script y'all own at this moment, whatever. Just, just, <laughs> give finish it. that shit up and give it to us now. We got to get this out next week. And, uh, you know, they, it's, a, it's a movie that know they're going to make money with. And they will make money because if, if I have my lenient sign come up and I, I have to say that kids, I mean, kids will love it. I know kids are not always the best, you know, barometer to judge these movies by. But there's so much going on. If I was a kid watching this, I would just love the visuals. I'd be swept up in this. I would have the best time. I would have a great time watching it. They're just very, very. I just, I'm just disappointed when you know that they've taken material that's kind of inspired and they can do even better with it to update it, and they don't do it. They do it just so that they can cash in at a particular uh, uh, at a particular time before that frame is gone. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I'm I'm gonna be just a little bit lenient on uh, this more than you, you, you bitch. Got, you're you're being a bitch, yeah, man. Bitch made. Go across my <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I give this. I, I give it a riddle. <laughs> you go do <laughs> I don't want to get nonsense on me. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fucking traitor. <laughs> yeah. Keep, keep, you, keep your the, bitch cooties over there. The funny, the funny thing you say is like, if I was a kid, I enjoyed this. Did you hear any kids having fun in that movie? I did. No, no, you did. I did. I did. I did. I did. The kid in me. Was like, was like, you fell asleep. <laughs> you know what? I saw the thing. I had a nice nap, so I was refreshed. So I enjoyed this a little more than you did. You know, you cranky guys over there. You were tired. That's all. That's all. I stayed awake. Like, I was. I was tired of watching that bullshit. <laughs> oh, Alice, you always were an irksome, slurvish, interrupting thing. <laughs> Remember-